Are you savoring the things be of God or but that those be of men? Are you savoring God or are you savoring men? Hmm, I wonder who said this. <laughs> uh, Matthew 16 and 23. But, but he turned, that's Jesus, but he turned and said unto Peter, Watch the language Jesus used towards Peter. Get he get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art in offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Whoa! Wow! What what powerful statement Jesus made to Peter. Now, what's interesting about this statement that I always, you know, say in my message, I mean, if he called Peter Satan twice and then said, upon this rock, he will build his church. I mean, really, y'all, come on. He can't, he can't use us. He can't use us sinners. You know, come on, y'all. I mean, but that's another message. But let's talk about this situation right here. Now, interesting that, of course, we know that Jesus said, Peter, upon his rock, it shall build a church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, but interesting that Peter was the one that walked on water. You know what I'm saying? While all the other disciples want to stay in the boat, Peter walked on water, trying to get closer to Jesus Christ. Hmm, I know of people that's trying to do that. Christians are doing that. Yes, Christians, you know, Peter really represent the idea of I of, of the ideal of a Christian and the development supposed to be the process of, of being learning, taking Jesus yoke and learning of him to be more like Jesus Christ. Peter went on that journey concerning uh, in the natural. He went on a journey walking with Jesus. Now, Peter walked with Jesus, right? And that's what's interesting about what Jesus is saying right here. Peter walked with Jesus, got a miracle from Jesus of, you know, the, the fishes, you know, in the net. You know, he experienced the power of God through Jesus Christ and seen manifested in his eyes. You know what I'm saying? He's seen these things. And Jesus says this to Peter. <laughs> and it's talking about, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Thou art become a fence unto me. Wait a minute. Peter is a becoming, he become a, a fence. Thou art an offense unto me. Sorry, thou art is offense unto me. You know what I'm saying? Thou savor not the things of God. Now, I'm not a, you know, dictionary buff. But, you know, I had to look in the dictionary for this one, you know. Uh, and it's interesting what I found in the dictionary concerning the word savor, you know. Uh, it's, watch this. The word savor is the quality in the substance that ye perceive by the sense of taste and smell. That's what it says in the dictionary, the qualities in a substance. Now, let me talk about the quality in the substance. Now, it's interesting that King David said, of course, taste and see, to taste and see that he is good, that the Lord is good. I think uh, Psalms 33, uh, taste and see that he is good. They, we're supposed to taste and see that he is good, that we know the Lord, he's talking about the Lord, and we know Jesus Christ is Lord, that we're supposed to be tasting and seeing that he is good and tasting to find the quality of the substance. Of course, faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. Are we, and faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So are we hearing the word of God and finding out the qualities of the word of God 
to see how great of quality that it is that we are wanted so much that we are tasting and seeing spiritually of the things of God. You know, now watch this. Um, and now watch this. When you taste and see the substance that you perceive. Now, what's interesting that he said is perceived because uh, Matthew's 13, that, you know, is what I, you know, uh, follow. Uh, Matthew's 13, it says they have eyes, but they can't see. They have ears, but they can't hear. But it says in the uh, Matthew's 13, it says in the 14th verse, it says in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah's which said, by hearing ye hear and shall not understand and seeing ye seeing and shall not perceive. That's what's interesting. That it says the quality in the substance that is perceived. And here, uh, Jesus talking about that you hear and shall not perceive. Now, uh, I believe Amos talks about an ideal situation that it shall come a time that people will uh, 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 something will uh, they will not hear the word of God you know what I'm saying that they will uh, a drought of hearing the word of God I could be wrong but uh, but I think he talks about that there are gonna become a time that we have a difficult time hearing the word of God and man how how this time is so evident right now, unfortunately, as Christians, as like Peter, Peter walked with Jesus Christ. Peter experienced the miracles of God. Peter, you know, heard the kingdom of God talk. And Jesus says this to Peter after, you know, Peter doing all, seeing all this powerful works of God, tasting and seeing the power of God, seeing how God multiplied the fishes seeing all these works, he says this to them. Yes, Christians, this is down your alley that it, it, the savor is the quality and the substance that perceived by the senses. What are we sensing things spiritually or are we sensing things in the natural? Because that's what it will boil down because Jesus says, but those that be of man, are we sensing the things that be of this world concerning man? Is man is what we tasting and seeing more than we are tasting and seeing God? You know what I'm saying? Do we rather want to hear what man, are we tasting and savoring to hear what man has to say than we are tasting and see, seeing what God has to say? You know what I'm saying? Is what God is putting before him. And as what Jesus, you know, continually says, and then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their, his cross and follow him, me and follow him. You know what I'm saying? That because he's saying, if we, we have to lose this life to pretty much know how to savor, to taste and see the things of God. We cannot taste and see the things of God operating in the flesh. I mean, we cannot be so caught up in what this world system and this influence in television and radio and whatever to be liking the tasting what they like to tell you about, of course, something that has something to do with you in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? It's something that has something to do with a great man. Oh, this great person over here. This great man said this. This great man says that. We rather want to hear what the world, people in the world have to say about certain things that are going on in this world and listen to men's wisdom. Rather, we want to listen to the wisdom of God is what this is all about. That, you know, that we, most Christians are not desiring it. Because here's the thing, how this thing is supposed to work, Christians. When we do what the word of God says, or more likely, when and do what the word of God says, and if Jesus be high and lifted up, not ourselves being lifted up, you know, concerning 
our big time ministry, our big time church. But when we be about lifting Jesus Christ up, we will draw all men unto him. See, it's about the church doing what the word of God says and lifting Jesus up that we draw unto all men. Is how it's supposed to work. It's not supposed to be like, oh, this individual is supposed to be, you know, doing this and 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 doing this, and and, and they're supposed to, they're drawing all kind of people to this, and they, you know, this church drawing all kind of people. No, it's when we, as the body of Christ, you know, can do exceedingly above all we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, that we will be about savoring the word of God, that we perform the word of God, that we perform the word of God, not the words of men, but we perform the word of God because we desire and we savor the things of God more than the things of men. You know what I'm saying? That we desire, even though we will lose as what Jesus lost the popularity contest with his own uh, people that, you know, and died on the cross for us and saved our life, we supposed to be losing the popularity contest amongst those that are around you that are doing contrary to what the word of God. We will, should have that savor, that desire to stand on our faith, fight with our faith, uh, 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 speak the word of God, speak the sword of the word of God, and do it because we are about what Jesus, we are about the things that be of God, not about the things that be of men. But Jesus showed us when we be about the things of men, what will happen to us in the 25th verse. I mean, the 26th verse, it says, for what is a man profit if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? But when we start doing, but what, what, why did that happen? Because someone, you know, be about the things of men. Be about the things. Men says they can make you rich. Men, if you do this negative thing, men can say whatever they say, you know, God, Romans 3, 4, God be truth, every man be a liar. I mean, it is, they can say all the lies they want to. And as much as we believe and savor lies, we will find ourselves in this position doing these kind of things. But we're supposed to savor the things of God and standing on his word of God and being about the truth of God. If we have the savor here, that we understand the quality of his love. We understand the quality of his joy. We understand the quality of his peace. We understand the substance of this powerful faith that heal, deliver, and set free those that are in bondage. We understand and we perceive that we see in our spiritual eyes the greatness of God. We know the great, the greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We recognize that as what David says, that who is the king of glory? The Lord that's strong and mighty. Who's the king of glory? The Lord that's mighty in battle. We recognize God in his greatness. We savor and has a desire and a taste of his word of God each and every day. That so much that if a man's word come in there, it will kick, get kicked out. Because we savor and we desire, we are addicted to Jesus Christ. We're addicted to the things of God. We are allergic to any lie that a man said and any lie the devil said. This is what this savoring is supposed to be all about. That kind of reaction that we're supposed to have if we develop the spirit of God inside of us. That's what's supposed to be our response. If we savor the things of God than the things of men, as what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 23. It's time to be about savoring God and not savoring the disgusting things of this, what men has been continuously doing throughout human history because they listen to the God of this world, blind the minds of men, making them, exalting themselves higher than God and as God, but they will never be in the level of God, no matter how much they want to believe a lie themselves. 
All right, that's the message. Hope you be about savoring the things of God and not the things of men. To God be the glory, him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.